Hey guys, today we are going to talk about our Magic the Gathering players. In particular, when you have a bunch of them, maybe at pre-release or FNM, are they smelly? If you don't want to continue watching this video, the answer is yes, Magic players are smelly. Now there's all types of reasons. Uh, mainly, I think Friday Night Magic and the Midnight Release. It's difficult to take a shower before you go to these events. Most people go straight from work. I have magic friends who are construction workers. They don't have time. It's, you know, they get off at five, drive to the store at six, and that's how they play. Now, do local game stores smell? It has a particular smell to it and not a very good one. And why is that the case? Well, anytime you put in a group of people and they are, you know, off work, maybe they're from high school and they haven't recently showered, it's going to cause people to be quite smelly. Does this take away from Magic the Gathering? I think it does a tiny bit, but there's two types of smells. There's the one type of smell where I don't think you can help. And then there's another type of smell that you can at least not participate in, which is farting. And I've said this before, farting is kind of a endemic. It's a disease that happens in my local game stores. I don't know why people find it funny, but a lot of guys um, will fart all the time. And I, it's very inappropriate, especially if there are younger children, or maybe female Magic players. I will be honest, I haven't really seen any female Magic players in the past four or five years. Like at the, maybe at pre-release, but not at game day and not at FNM. Game days, I used to go from game store to game store and pre-release, I used to play it like all five of them. So not too many female Magic players in Houston. Obviously now, my comments will be like, oh, I'm a female Magic player, MTG Lion, you you just didn't count me. And I was like, this is my personal experience, right? So anyway, back to the super gross, the abnormal. And so customers at the game stores are paying for the atmosphere. So if you ask why does one restaurant cost more than another restaurant, it might not just be the food, it might be the atmosphere, it might be that it's more fun, and it might just be that it smells better, to be quite honest. If you're concerned about the smell, tell the owner you're concerned. Maybe they can't do anything, but at the same time, at least they know. The other issue with that I want to tackle is not just the smell, but the rudeness of Magic players in general. I wanted to save this issue for last. Because smell, I don't think you can really change it. I mean, the farting is a little... It's, it's very bad. But the general smelliness and given when FNM is and pre-release is a very long time. And we're, in, we're down here in Houston where it's humid and hot. And that place called Battle Bunker didn't even, like it was 100 degrees, 110 degrees outside. And they didn't even have air conditioning. So even if everyone had deodorant and just had showered, it would still be very bad. Okay, rudeness. One of the things I dis like about my locals and they're one of the reasons I don't attend it so much is the rudeness of certain players and all it takes is one player. I had players with headphones on who don't want to talk and that's very strange to me. Uh, I have friends who don't, I have, uh, they're not my friends. I have local, local members who don't shake your hand after you win or after you lose. You could say good game and they just mumble. There is a I would call a tribal element. There's 11 Magic players that used to go to DNA Comics when the pre-release was 100 people and they would collaborate, have a quote smoke break, and then come back with much better decks than they came out with. Like, you know, it's pretty obvious when you have seven on-color mythics and rares and all of them have seven, like it's like, hmm, I wonder what happened outside for the smoke break. And given the fact that half of them don't smoke, so, Okay. I've had people throw their decks at me, their draft decks, and 
it's like, okay. And these subtle rudeness. Oh, you got lucky. Oh, that's a nice top deck. But you, I was going to win anyway. So like, okay, I, it was nice to happen, but did I really need it? Probably not. And a lot of people blame losing on no luck. And then they become extremely aggravated and rude. Those are the two big factors that detract people, new people from coming into the store. Number one, the smelliness, because it hits you right in the face. Number two, rudeness. And all it takes is one rude person to make your event bad. Remember, we're going there for fun. We're going there to have fun with each other and have a good experience. So therefore, the atmosphere really does matter. If When I was um, at NYU, I used to work at the stock... I'm not going to tell you which one, but I still have a backpack from it. So I used to work at a stock brokerage and I could afford nicer restaurants. The only difference between a really nice restaurant for that would cost you $100, $150 an entree versus one that would cost you $20, $25 isn't really the food. Yeah, the food quality is a little bit higher. It's the atmosphere. It's the ambiance. It's the service that you're receiving. And that's the same with a local game store. There are some local game stores in Houston that are very good and have amazing service. And there's some that I don't care very much at all. Uh, they don't care about it. They don't care about the customers. They have a lot of toxic members. And they ask why are they not growing the same way that this other... Well, so in Houston, I don't know if I should drop names because... A, most of you won't know the names, and B, it might, uh, you know, it might tell people why I go. But one of my favorite places to take a new person in Houston is somewhere called Asgard Games. Very, very beautiful place. And you would never believe it's a Magic the Gathering store, but it is. Very clean. The, friend, uh, the employees are friendly. I believe Will may still own the place. He's nice, and I see him, and he has his own collecting. He's a nerd. Like, I like it. I don't like when... The owner is, I don't know why they would get into the business unless they loved it. And it really shows that he loves. I don't visit as much as I can because I don't live in that part of town anymore, which is unfortunate, but you know, I bought a home, so. And then all the way to Battle Bunker where it's literally 110 degrees and I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure they have AC. And the reason I believe they have AC is because the next room over is a computer room, right? And with overheating. So they had a business model where half the store was car games and the other half the store was landlines and stuff, like computer games. Like mostly League of Legends, I feel like, and Counter-Strike. So I know those computers had to be cooled down somehow and it would be very strange if half the store had air conditioning and the other half did not. So those are the two big things that I feel like uh, deter new players from joining, rude people as well as the smelly people. And the smelly people, some of it can be helped, some of it cannot be, so I don't want to harp too much on the smelly people, but we can all be a little nicer. We can all be a little kinder, and especially if someone's new. I remember when I was new to Magic when in elementary school, and we did, I didn't know how to play the game until someone taught me. Someone in Wizard of the Coast, we, I was fortunate enough to have a Wizard of the Coast store that I used to go all the time, and they would teach you how to play Magic. And it's like, oh, this is great. This is actually how the game works. Um, and I loved it. So I'm very grateful for that. I always try to give back to my community. I actually do not have a current local game store I go to. And that's sad. Uh, it's sad, right? I mean, I still buy lots of Magic cards. I still enjoy the game. I play with Presley. I'm teaching Presley how to play the game, which we'll do like a tutorial later. She's been sick and she didn't get like, she's sick. So um, once she gets healthy, I mean, she'll be opening boxes and doing casual stuff and Magic Arena. So I will start her all on Magic Arena. We'll put my credit card on file, of course. <laughs> and we'll do all that stuff. Um, I do love the game of Magic. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, the it's like Voltaire. I don't know the exact quote, but he, it's essentially, essentially if you love something, you will critique it and you will make it better. 
if you're only in it to make money from it and drain it, you're not going to critique it because you're going to ride that wave out. You're going to do, people say, oh, you're only making these drama videos. Uh, this is a small side, as you know, I don't do a script and I don't fake any of it. So small side that I wanted to just put out there. Most of the drama videos are not even monetized. I'll just put that out there. Because of the titles, the subtitles, I know this. I'm not, I'm not an idiot, right? If you say certain things in the video, like if I'm saying, hmm, 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 blank, 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 predator. Well, I mean, the word in front of blank predator and those two words combined probably demonetize any videos I have mentioning blank predator. This video probably is demonetized because I'm mentioning blank predator. Right? It's not predator versus alien. I'm mentioning blank predator. So yeah, so I make, I'm not making a ton of money from this. And I think that's what you guys have to understand is I don't care. I have a full-time job. I own a business with employees and vendors. And I mean, they're, they, they have real jobs. They have families that, you know, I have to make sure they all get paid. So in terms of quote, YouTube money, I mean, it's just play money. It's Play-Doh money. It's Monopoly money. It's not even real to me. Anyway, bye guys.